Hey there YouTube, it's Elizabeth. Today I want to show you my entire Monstera collection. I have 11 Monsteras and it's my favorite genus, so let's just go ahead and get started. I think I'll start with these tall poles and just work my way around the room. So the first Monstera is the Monstera Standaliana, and this is one of my favorites uh, for two reasons. One, it's a very fast grower, and secondly, it has beautiful, splashy variegation on the leaves. And some of the leaves show some really nice sectoral variegation as well. Um, so there's some really nice splashy variegation. This is the leaf I was trying to reach for. Really pretty chunky variegation there. The leaves come out really uh, shiny. So here's the newest one. You can see how shiny that is. And then they turn a dark green as they get older. You can see I have it up on a moss pole as I do the majority of my Monsteras. And I have all of them in a very chunky potting mix that's actually meant for Phalaenopsis orchids. It is a mixture of pine bark, uh, charcoal and chunky perlite and I put it in this really chunky mixture because I tend to overwater my plants so this just ensures that the water drains through and it's not sitting in uh, water. Um, also it keeps uh, aeration to the roots um, so that the roots are exposed to oxygen which they like. Um, I got this plant at my local plant store for $30 or $40. It was about to here, and they had just grown it on like a trellis, and so I put it on this moss pole. It has not rooted very well into the substrate, into the sphagnum moss, um, but from what I've seen on YouTube, that's pretty common for this Monstera. And so, since mine is so close to the top of the moss pole, I'm gonna have to propagate it pretty soon. And I'm not really looking forward to that because I've, uh, from what I've seen, it does not propagate very well. So that's gonna be kind of a sad day because this plant is so um, stately and beautiful um, and I don't really want to chop it up, but I think I'm going to have to. Um, yeah, that's that plant, the Monstera Standaliana. The next one is the Monstera Adansonii. This is a more common Monstera. I bought it at Lowe's and I paid $20 for it. It has beautiful fenestrated leaves. It's still in its juvenile form. It has the ability to get huge fenestrated leaves, um, but I think mine is still too young and just doesn't have enough light um, to get to that stage, not at this point anyway. There were, I think, five plants in this pot, and so I potted all five of them up, and two of them just took off, and they are just racing each other towards the top. The leaf size was increasing, but then it decreased a little bit, and I, I don't know why, but I'm hoping that as it kind of grows into the uh, grow light, that the leaf size will increase again. Um, but I love just how like full and bushy this is, um, and I love the jungly vibe that it gives. Really nice look for such a common house plant. Next, we have the Monstera dubia. This is more of an uncommon uh, Monstera. I bought it off of Etsy. I paid $40 for it, and it was originally grown on a plank. Um, it was about to here when I bought it, and as you can see, it is making its way up the moss pole, increasing in leaf size, and it is almost to the top. But like I said, it was grown onto a plank and I gently ripped it off of the plank and put it up on a moss pole because that's what I prefer. And it really likes it. Um, you can see, let me show you some aerial roots. There's one right here that's pretty chunky. 
Look at that. That looks nice. These leaves show some uh, what's called blistering variegation, which is the silvery variegation. And as the leaves uh, mature, they lose that variegation, but they will fenestrate. So hopefully mine will mature someday and I can get some big fenestrated jungly leaves. But I do like this, um, the, the juvenile form as well, because of that blistering variegation. I think that's a pretty pattern. It grows in this shingling pattern, um, which is where one leaf goes one way, one leaf goes the other way, and it just grows back and forth and back and forth. So that's the Monstera dubia. We're going to skip this plant and move to the Monstera deliciosa. Let me back up so you can see it. This is a pretty common house plant, but I love it even if it is pretty common. Um, it's just the green form. Um, these come in all sorts of variegated forms, but mine is just the green form. And I have it up on a moss pole, even though I've been told you don't need a moss pole with this plant. I prefer to put it on one just as it gets bigger and bigger. I want it to have that structural um, stability that it gives. There are three plants in this pot, two big ones, and then one really little one. You can see the, the tiny leaves here. And one of the plants is rooted into the moss pole already, so it will have that structural stability. And the other one hopefully will um, root as it gets bigger. I have had a lot of problems with thrips with this plant, and so I just really have to keep my eyes on it every day and spray it um, with insecticidal uh, soap as needed. I've been using insecticidal soap. I used to use a neem oil solution. I don't really know which one works better. Um, maybe that's a topic for a different video, but I thought I would mention it. I'm worried about that this plant is not getting enough light. As you can see uh, with all of my plants, I use these inexpensive Amazon grow lights and I don't think they put out enough light for what these plants require. Um, here's a new leaf, and as you can see, it doesn't have uh, very many fenestrations, which is a sign that it's not getting enough light. I think I wanna try mounting the lights up here like I did with these plants. See how I mounted it up there? Um, I want to try that and have the lights coming down from up above. So that's a project that I have planned. But yeah, that's the Monstera Deliciosa. I bought this plant at a local farm and garden store. I paid probably $25 to $30 for it. I, this is actually my third Deliciosa. I killed the first two. Um, I was still very new to house plants and I overwatered them and they got root rot. And so I told myself, if this one dies, you're not gonna get a fourth one. That's it with Deliciosas, but it's actually doing very well. So I am um, quite pleased with myself <laughs> that I, I managed to, you know, realize what the problem was and fix the problem. And that's um, why I put it in that very chunky orchid bark mix. All right, let's move on to the next set of poles. The next plant I have is the Monstera Peru, which might actually be a philodendron, but because it is more commonly known as a Monstera, I'm gonna put it in this video. And it just has gorgeous, bumpy, textured leaves and a really pretty light green on dark green kind of color pattern there. Um, this plant does not fenestrate and I have not had any pest issues with it, thank goodness, but it is a very, very slow grower. I've only gotten these three leaves here and then this leaf down here and then I just noticed yesterday 
that there's some new growth right in there. So that's super exciting to see. But I've had this plant for maybe eight months now, and that's the only growth that it's given me. So it's definitely a slow grower. I got it at Lowe's. I paid $20 for it, and obviously it's up on a moss pole. But yeah, I really like the texture of the leaves and just the full kind of bushy vibe that it gives. So yeah, that's the Monstera Peru. Next is the Monstera Escaletto, and I bought this off of Etsy. I paid $60 for it, and prices have come down on this plant. The seller from whom I bought it is now selling it for $40, so prices definitely do come down. Um, I've had issues with this plant. I've had issues with thrips, and the leaf size has just not increased. And actually, the top leaf was so small and it um, fell off the other day. And I have not had any new growth in well over a month. And I don't think I'm going to get any new growth. But the interesting thing is, I am getting new growth down... Can you see that? I'm going to zoom in right there. All of these nodes have been activated with new growth. You might be able to see there's a little bit of green right there. I know you can see this one. I, Yeah, I'd show you more, but I don't think the camera is going to be able to pick it up. But at so many nodes, the new growth has been activated. So yeah, this plant is doing some very interesting things. My plan for this plant originally was to grow it to the top of the moss pole and then chop it up and then plant about five plants in the pot, let those grow and like sell the rest of the cuttings. But I'm wondering if I should just chop it up now because the new growth has already been activated. So that uh, if I decide to do that, I will definitely film that and uh, put it out in another video. But um, this plant has the potential to get huge, incredibly fenestrated leaves. Uh, fenestration means window, and it refers to the holes or splits in the leaves. I should have said that at the beginning of the video. Um, I just hope mine does better. Um, I see my battery is low, so I'm going to get a new battery and we will continue. Okay, I'm back with enough battery for now. The next plant is the Monstera Lecleriana, and I love this plant, but you can see it has some pretty obvious issues with it. Um, so first of all, there are three plants in this pot. The smallest plant is in the middle, and there's its biggest leaf, um, which is a pretty good size for this plant. Yes, kitty? Mimin. Hello, you want to be in the video? Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, and then it has two bigger plants. Um, so the middle plant I got from a lady on Facebook, um, one of the members of my Facebook plant group, and I paid $10 for it. It was a rooted cutting. And then the two plants on the side uh, or from my local plant store, and I think I paid maybe 24 for the pair. But the leaves on these plants are velvety. They're so soft, and I don't know if you can see the sheen on those leaves, but if you were to feel them, they're just so soft. There's a new leaf on the way. See right there? And these leaves are capable of fenestrating. In fact, I do have one that has fenestrated down here. Um, but I don't think that it's getting enough light, which is why the top ones are not fenestrating. So let's talk about the obvious. There's this crisping going on on the older leaves, and I don't know what's causing it. I don't know if it's bacterial or fungal or viral or if it's a pest issue, or what is causing it. I have had issues with thrips with this plant, but this 
the pattern of yellowing and browning is just not it's not what thrips looks like in my experience so if any of you has any idea what um, is causing this please let me know in the comment section um, but I really love this plant and I want it to do well um, but yeah that's the Monstera lecleriana I want to go back to this set of um, plant shelves because I actually skipped two Monsteras. Um, they're down here. They are not on moss poles. They're pretty small. The first one is my Monstera Panati Partita. Let me just move it so I can film it better. All right, here's the Panati <laughs> Partita. And I got this from the same Facebook group lady. Uh, I paid $10 for it for a rooted uh, cutting and there was one leaf on the plant and then this leaf grew and the original leaf died and then for months and months and months, like six months, the plant did absolutely nothing until like a week ago it finally grew this leaf and I'm so happy that it finally did something. I was waiting and waiting and waiting just as patiently as possible. And um, yeah, one day I came home from work and there was just this little um, nubbin that had popped out and I was just over the moon. Um, so this plant uh, has the potential to get fenestrated leaves, but mine is still juvenile as you can see. And I just have it in a pretty small pot in my orchid bark potting mix. Um, but yeah, I don't have very much to say about, about it because it's still pretty small. Um, but no issues with pests or anything. And yeah, that's the Pinati Partita. Let me put it back and switch it out with the Obliqua. Um, this is, I wish this plant looked better and I wish you could see more of what an obliqua actually looks like. An obliqua has amazingly fenestrated leaves. It's more like it's, um, let me set it down. It's mature leaves are actually more holes than they are leaves. And I had some leaves like that and it got thrips and all three of the leaves died off unfortunately. Um, but I do have some new growth right here. It doesn't have the like blade part of the leaf, but it does have enough of the petiole so that another leaf can um, grow from it. I, <laughs> I'm a little bit embarrassed to say I paid $70 for this sad looking plant. Um, but that's just the going price for them. At least it was a few months ago when I bought it. Prices may have dropped a little bit. I bought it off of Etsy. And um, it is considered a uncommon or a rare plant. Um, and I just wish mine were doing better. But I love it so much. Um, at least I did when it had those beautiful fenestrated leaves on it. And right now I'm just... I need to be patient and uh, hope and, and wait and see for some more growth to come on, on this plant. Um, but yeah, just patience is key because right now it's not looking so good, but I need to just keep an eye on it every day, check for thrips, make sure it doesn't get any worse because I don't want this plant to die because it was it's too expensive to lose. Um, all right, so that is the obliqua. Let's move on to the other side of the room. We have another rare plant, or uncommon plant. I don't know if it's still considered rare, rare, but this is the Monstera Thai constellation. Let me turn it to show you. And mine is still a juvenile form. Um, because it's not fenestrated yet. But this has beautiful cream colored splashy variegated leaves which makes it really special. And I bought it off of Etsy. I paid $75 for it. And this plant I do not plan to put up on a moss pole. 
um, because it grows really slowly uh, from what I've heard. And also the internodal spacing is really tight. And so I don't think it's gonna need that structural integrity that the moss pole gives. Um, so I'm just going to let it grow without a moss pole and hopefully it won't actually need one. But I just have this plant in a north facing window without a grow light on it, which um, I don't think, I don't really know if it's enough light for it. I'm thinking I might move it to my east facing window because um, I feel like this plant deserves a little bit more than a north facing window. I told myself I wasn't allowed to get this plant until I could take care of a regular green Monstera deliciosa without killing it. Um, like I told you before, I'm on my third deliciosa, and now that mine is doing well, uh, I gave myself permission to get this plant. And it's doing fine. I water it once a week. It is a slow grower, so uh, I'm just patiently waiting for another leaf to emerge. It's only given me this one leaf so far. Um, so yeah, it's another lesson in patience. Let's put it back, and I just have one more plant to show you. All right, the last Monstera is the Silta Pecana, and as you can see, it's up on a moss pole. This plant also has the potential to get huge fenestrated leaves, but right now it is a juvenile form. But the leaves are kind of silvery uh, in between the veins, which is pretty neat. Um, this plant has very like thin leaves, but I haven't had issues with thrips or spider mites, which is good. Not yet anyway, but I'm always, um, you know, checking and turning over the leaves just to make sure. I got this at a cute little plant store in Charlotte, North Carolina called Grow. And there are two plants in the pot. I bought it for $36, which might be a little overpriced, but um, I bought it at an actual store, so they have to pay rent and stuff. And the prices reflect that. It's my newest Monstera, so it hasn't done much growing. I'm assuming its roots are just kind of getting situated in the new substrate. And um, yeah, it's just finding its footing and then it'll put out new leaves. But I would love to see this increase in leaf size and maybe one day give me some fenestrated leaves. Anyway, those are all of my Monsteras. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.